So I've been thinking about building a Hackintosh computer. So you know what a Hackintosh is. It's just a computer that somebody assembles with parts that they bought. And then instead of loading Windows or some other operating system on it, they'll load uh, the Mac operating system. And then they've got themselves a Macintosh at a fraction of the cost, usually, of what you would pay to uh, buy a store-bought or one from Apple directly. So I've seen a bunch of videos of people doing this, and they make it look pretty easy. And maybe they did a lot of homework before they got to showing you what they did, and that's all benefits for us, right? So we can take advantage of that knowledge. And since I'm a woodworker, I decided I want to put mine into a wooden case, custom designed and everything. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, so I just wanted to show you before I start, here are the main parts that I'm going to use to make this thing. And, uh, you know, when I look at it, there really isn't much to it. I got the motherboard here, processor, uh, memory, the cooler, uh, the drive, which is going to be a solid state drive, power supply for on the board. The, this goes onto the motherboard. And then this is the external power supply. And this is a... Um, I think that's a Wi-Fi card. So really, not much to it, and I expect that it's gonna go pretty smoothly. All right, you can see I've got all the parts out of their packaging, and I think we're ready to start assembling. Okay, so I've got the major components all assembled here. Plug this in here. Plug this in here. And I think it's this one. Yeah. And looks like it powers up. So I think we're on the right track. I've loaded the uh, Mac operating system onto this little USB drive along with the uh, instructions that uh, I got from the Tony Mac x86 site. Yeah, we're getting somewhere already. <sighs> Pardon my dusty screen. Okay, oh look at that, we already got the Apple icon, cool. Hey, look at that. We got ourselves a Hackintosh. I've got it all working as I showed you in that last scene. And now it's time to build the case for it. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm gonna build this out of wood. So it's gonna get fun now. So in the meantime, I can take this uh, unit and put it aside. I don't need it right now. I'll do some measurements on it here and there to see how I'm going, how it's going, but basically I don't need this for now. So I'll just put it aside. Maybe even put it in a cabinet to keep it from getting all dusty with sawdust. <laughs> all right, so before I actually start cutting this to make the top and bottom of the, of the case, I'm going to actually make a pattern because I want to make, uh, I want to hollow out the insides of the top and bottom to make them a little bit lighter. So what I'm going to do is create a pattern. I've got this uh, hardboard material and I'm going to uh, draw out my patterns on here and cut them out and then that's going to become a pattern to create a hollow on this part. And then um, after I do that, then I will cut out the shape of the, the top and bottom parts. All right. Uh, there you go. There you can see the cutouts inside the base material. <laughs> I was hoping to put this material away from here so that I would be able to minimize that chamfer that is going to take away part of my base, but I uh, did it the wrong way. So, oh well, we'll just have a little bit more character in this. And 
looks pretty good. simulated weathered plank paneling and I'm gonna uh, use this to make the sides I think it'll make a nice contrast with the with the cherry wood so we'll see how that works so I cut four pieces that are eight inches long and four that are seven and a quarter inches long and I've got to do a little bit more finish detail on these parts. All right, you can see here I've made up a bunch of the pieces that I'm going to need. I got the cutout for the back panel. Right now, I think I'm at the point where I can go ahead and glue all these together. got the case in a state that's uh, partly done so I've got the unit here and we're going to try to drop it in a little tight I think it's good there we go how do you like that So I've been working on these little pieces that I'm going to need to finish up this assembly. So let me show you some of these parts here. This one is, uh, consists of a few pieces that go together. And the idea is that these are going to end up inside of here. They're going to go inside of here. And it's going to be like a button, sort of a spring-loaded button. And then when you push it, it will release the uh, lid and then I'll be able to remove the lid. So this will be attached to the lid down here someplace. The other thing I've got is this little uh, tray for the uh, solid state drive. So it's going to just sit in here and go inside the case. All right, now we're going to throw it in there real carefully. All right, so we let this uh, new gizmo dry overnight, and so we're going to try how this works. Hopefully uh, it doesn't break off, that's my worry. Ooh. Look at that. That is not, look at that. Wow. All right, so I've got everything installed now. It's, you can see the, Motherboard's inside there, 
and these uh, these nice buttons are working and I'm gonna take this lid off but you can see everything's inside there I gotta attach this power cord here and this USB port as well all right you know what we're getting close to the end so you can see I put a nice finish on this thing well I tried to put a nice finish on it I got this uh, USB port on the side here I'm gonna attach that let's do a last fit on this cover here make sure it fits okay so the Hackintosh with wooden case project is complete I couldn't be more thrilled with how this project turned out one of the things I really love about this project is the push button release mechanism for the lid Speaking of the lid, I also love the swirl pattern for the cooling vents, which I also used on the bottom, even though I'm hardly ever going to look at the bottom. I'm also glad I added this auxiliary set of USB ports on the front of the case. Very handy. I don't know if you noticed, but there was definitely a Mac Pro influence on my design. I tried to emulate the overall style of that computer while putting my own personal touch on it. The Mac Pro uses the sleek cylindrical aluminum housing. Mine is an octagonal wooden one. I also use the same bottom to top airflow concept as the Mac Pro for cooling it. Now when I was applying the finish to this case, which is oil based, I asked myself if I'm creating a fire hazard with the electronics of the computer being installed right next to the finish. Honestly, I'm not sure, but I decided to take a bit of a chance. I'm gonna make a point of not leaving this thing running while I'm not nearby, just in case. Now if you watch this whole video, I'm sure you realize that making the case for this computer was not driven by trying to save a few bucks on a case. There are plenty of low cost computer cases out there. The point was to make something original and I definitely achieved that goal. Finally, I want to point out that even though building and configuring the hardware for this project was no easy task, designing and building the case for this thing was even more work. Coming up with a shape that would properly house all the hardware and making the pieces for it turned out to be a lot more complicated than I expected. But you know what? I'm totally glad I went through with it. So on the computer itself, even though this is the first computer I've ever built, I really didn't find it that difficult, except for the part involving configuring the hardware. There is a lot of good information out there on building your own computer, including Hackintoshes, so that definitely makes it less daunting than it might have been in the past. You'll find some links to the resources I used in the description of this video. Well, thanks for watching.